Turkish March, Road to Boston, The Harriet. Chase, a small farm owner in western Massachusetts and a Revolutionary War veteran, had taken a stand against the government of Massachusetts to influence the writing of the United States Constitution. In 1786, Daniel Chase had started a rebellion against the overpowering amount of taxes that were repetitively being raised by Governor James Bowdoin. They protested at the doors of courts and did not allow entry of judges, so there was no arbitrary foreclosure upon the farms of Massachusetts residents. Daniel Shays took this stance and now is considered the main reason we have the Constitution today. He had no paycheck from the war because of the massive debt the state was in for all the war taxes the state had to pay. Daniel was not able to keep his farm along with many other farmers and war veterans. He, like many others, was unable to pay the taxes that were being steeply raised consistently on the working class. Daniel Shays had no intention to pay any extra taxes while the wealthy in his state did not have to pay anything. So he started a rebellion. He started to raise an army of rebels who referred to themselves as regulators or Shaysites. On August 29th, 1786, Shays led a group of about 1,500 men to a courthouse in Northampton. They rallied outside the courts. Some men were armed with guns or clubs. Some men were be beating drums and rallying with corruption. They had refused the entry of three judges, who then had to delay all court session until November. More and more farmers and war veterans started to catch on to the idea of rebelling against the government, and many other courts were shut down from the inspiration of Shays. Um, the lower house of the legislature was, was willing to, um, to sort of give them some relief. Um, to extend their, the, the, the payment of their debts, um, to make it easier for them to stay in, on their property. Um, but the upper house of, of the Massachusetts Assembly um, didn't want to change the contracts into which they had voluntarily entered with their creditors. You can make a really good argument that the creditors had been beaten up during the course of the revolution. With inflation spiraling out of control, it's very difficult for someone lending money uh, to make any, any profit on that. Daniel Shays believed that it was unjustifiable to tax the poor, the people who fought in the war, to an immense amount of money after returning home from the war with no paycheck. To add to his problems with poverty, the only currency the government would accept is actual cash, which was a problem for almost all farmers who sold crops or livestock. They traded actual items instead of selling things for money which is the reason why so many farmers struggled with paying taxes. According to Crash Course, a constitution, the government needed to tax extra to pay for the war that was just ending, so they actually taxed the people who fought in the war, which is the reason Daniel Shays started a rebellion in the first place. Articles of Confederation was the source of the problem. There were so many flaws in the Articles of Confederation, one being the entire way the colonies were run. The entire philosophy of having each state maintain and run a government completely failed, and that's when Shea stepped in and took matters into his own hands. The Articles allowed each state to make their own laws, taxes, and they would each elect their own governor. This made it very difficult to communicate information to all the towns throughout the state. It also made it difficult for citizens to pay their taxes, especially right after war. Shays recognized these problems and confronted them 
in a way that ended up in destruction and harm for the government. Other people were fearful that, that Chase's rebellion showed that the governments, whether it was the national government under the Articles of Confederation or state governments like the government of Massachusetts, um, couldn't really enforce the law. It took quite a few months for Massachusetts to regain control of the situation and put down this rebellion. Jefferson was probably the only founder to kind of look at, at the glass as being half full. The point that he took out of Shays' rebellion is this. The first thing he said, you know, uh, it's a pretty good thing that every once in a while we should have a rebellion like this. Although the government did not agree with the rebellion, many saw it as a good thing, including Thomas Jefferson. Thomas was quoted in a letter saying, a little rebellion now and then is a good thing. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. So you've got all of these problems that, that the founders are aware of. And then, of course, you have Shays' Rebellion, this agrarian insurrection in western Massachusetts that really uh, rattles the founders, particularly George Washington. At, at one point, Washington says that you know, he, he's afraid, and I'm paraphrasing, that you know, we've had too good an opinion of human nature in crafting our government. Maybe we, need to, maybe we need to have a more sober reassessment. And I think one can understand one of the differences that we see if you look at the, the, the traditions of constitutionalism in the first state constitutions in the Articles of Confederation versus the federal constitution. The former, for instance, in the Articles and the Bills of Rights of these state constitutions, they almost all have a provision that talks about the need for, for virtue, frugality, and moderation. And they put that in the in a bill of rights as if it's not just a kind of general statement of values. That if it's it, it's something that's a fundamental principle. And you know we don't usually think of bills of rights of telling us things we have to do to preserve our liberty. We usually think of them as saying things government can't do to to infringe our liberty. But here they they put this injunction in there that that, that in order to preserve liberty, citizens have these obligations. The ending to Shays Rebellion is not what mattered to Shays. He wanted justice and equality. His goal was not to take over the government or start a new country. His only goal was to be treated like an equal and not be seen as lower class scum. According to We the People, Shays' Rebellion, Shays' Rebellion ended in 1787. The government announced that they would pardon all who participated in the rebellion if they chose to put their guns down in the time period given. Unfortunately for Shays, they decided not to initially pardon him because he was the leader of all barbaric activity. So they decided to throw him in jail. After a while, Shays decided to ask for a pardon from the court, and to his surprise, they pardoned him from all jail time. It also did not end well for some of the most loyal rebels. Because they chose not to put their guns down in the time period given, 14 of the rebels were sentenced to death. What Chase did not know when he started this rebellion is that his rebellion led to one of the most historical documents ever written, the United States Constitution. The order of events during the rebellion made the government realize that the Articles of Confederation was not a strong enough governmental system to run a country like America. Daniel Shays stands against the Massachusetts government planted the seeds for the writing of the United States Constitution. Without the heroic stance Shays took, we might still have the Articles of Confederation today.